I'm Colin. And I'm Megan. And this is Pet Sitter Sitter Confessional, Confessional, an open and honest discussion about life as a pet sitter. Hello, and welcome to episode 121. Pet sitting through the holidays. (laughs) Welcome, and uh, if this is your first time listening, you can go back and check out our extensive back catalog at our website uh, or in the podcast app that you're listening to right now. We wanted to thank Pet Sitters Associates for making this show possible and also our patrons who are supporting us with just a cup of coffee each month. Not a literal cup of coffee, no. although... <laughs> <laughs> the price of a cup, a cup of, of coffee, coffee every month. Yeah. You. <laughs> if you would like to learn more or become a patron yourself, you can go to our website, PetSitterConfessional.com slash support and sign up there. Yeah. We really thank you for taking the time to listen to this today. These holidays... Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's coming up, they look really different than ones in years past. Obviously, COVID has just turned everyone's world upside down. So we know that some of our listeners around the globe are currently under more lockdowns. I know in the UK, they just did that a week or two ago. And they'll be locked down for another month and things are changing constantly. Um, And so people's travel plans are being disrupted at a moment's notice. Yeah. And so there's been a lot of talk of kind of jokingly, but also seriously, like going straight from Halloween to Christmas. Um, but I don't really think that's wise. I mean, here in the U.S., the holiday that's in between those is Thanksgiving. And of all the years, we definitely need Thanksgiving this year. There is so much to be thankful for. Obviously, every day we should be thankful for everything that we have. But Thanksgiving really is a time to reflect on exactly what you are thankful for. And we shouldn't just bypass it. Because we want this year to end. Yes, all of us want 2021. Here here we go. (laughs) But we really want to pause for a moment and just say what we are thankful for. So what are you thankful for? Uh, I am thankful for our kids. Uh, In the hectic, crazy days of this year um, and even currently going on, uh, they are just a constant reminder to be in the here and now and not to be so concerned about things that are coming that you lose sight of what you have around you right now. And that's a, it's a good reminder for me uh, to, to be present, to go explore with them, to go on a bike ride uh, and just enjoy that time. I am thankful for health. Hmm. It is more important now than ever in this year where many people have not had their health. I'm very, very thankful that you and I and, and everyone that we know is healthy. Right. So we want to know what you are thankful for this year. And you can send us a message on Instagram or Facebook and just let us know. We're at Pet Sitter Confessional. Uh, We'd we'd love to hear from you. As I mentioned, the holiday season looks very different. Some places are locked down. Some people are scared to travel. Some people just can't travel. And if they do travel, if they are going to be traveling, they likely aren't going to be going away for a long trip like we usually see people going away over Christmas and New Year's and just taking like a full 10, 14 days off. Right. That's probably not going to happen this year. And if it does, they're likely going to be driving somewhere. So how do we market to people differently during these holidays than we have in the past? Right. I think one really good idea is to emphasize and market the message of importance of pet safety during this time. Pets get into presents. They can eat uh, plants that people bring in, like poinsettias. They try and maybe even eat or attack the tree. Uh, Cats love knocking down ornaments. So letting people know that you are there to drop in to to check on the pets when those things are around or to remove them if necessary uh, and to help get out that energy so that the pets are actually safer when uh, all the decorations and all those things are out. Even if they are just doing a day trip to see family, you can still provide daycare. You can still provide a couple drop-in checks or even a dog walk while the family is over. If the dog is becoming too much or if there's too many family members around, you can let the dog out and take it for a walk for some exercise. You can also continue to promote your cleaning policies. COVID isn't going anywhere and people still need to feel safe about you coming into their home and vice versa, especially with pending lockdowns, or if you're in a lockdown right now, people want to know what you're doing to be safe so they don't get it. You may also consider upping your referral discount if you have one. So instead of $20 off a service, if you if someone refers you, you offer $30 off. 
Or you could just push gift certificates if that's something that you are also interested in, whether that someone buys it for somebody else or they may buy it for themselves. But as if anything taught us this year, um, put that off in a separate account or off to the side and, and don't necessarily spend it immediately. Wait until the service is rendered because we saw, and I know many of you experienced getting into that same trouble of having already spent that money that somebody bought on a gift certificate, and then everything got canceled and wiped out from underneath you back in March. So being a little bit more careful with how that money is spent and allocated and just waiting longer to actually use it uh, when the services are rendered. During the holidays, you may get requests to pet sit for family and friends. So it's a good time to consider and think about, will you? It's a big question and one that we often find ourselves getting asked is, Will you be pet sitting? Will you offer your services to friends and family? And if so, how much do you charge them, if at all? You don't really want to be working for free, but do you want to charge them your full rate or do you want to give them a discount? So seriously think about how comfortable you are with charging your mom or your aunt to care for their pet. And remember that by taking care of their pet, you are giving up a spot for some some other paying client and still accepting the liability of their care and safety. So many people may go ahead and say, okay, I will sit for my mom. I will sit for my aunt because they are traveling. You know, I I may give them a discount because they are family. Um, You may also consider, you know, trading for something. Say, okay, uh, I'm going to sit your pet for this other thing that I want from you. You get to watch the kids one weekend or, or something like that. Maybe bartering, I guess. Um, But what's really, really important in this is if you do decide to sit for friends and family, still maintain that professional attitude, update them just like you would if they were any other client, have them sign all the forms, all the documentations, take them through that entire process. Because as you said, Megan, you are still accepting that liability from caring for their pet and making sure that they are safe. What's also really important here is to make sure you set those boundaries. This is what you're able to do when you come at it from that professional standpoint with that professional attitude. You're setting those boundaries that you are still acknowledging. This is a business for me. I take this seriously and you will be treated just like any other client because I'm going to take you through all these same steps. It it may seem really, really silly, but you know, they do say never go into business with friends and family for a reason. But what if you are taking care of pets as a family? So as many of you know, we have two kids, ages three and five, and a lot of times they are with us. We primarily do boarding and daycare, and they are with us all the time through that. (laughs) So if you're taking care of pets and you have a family, some pros for working with them, if you have a spouse or a significant other or kids that work with you, that they're more willing to love on the pets and help out. It really teaches kids responsibility by walking, feeding, etc. Our kids are learning right now at preschool about taking care of pets, and they could probably teach the class. They, they have a leg up, right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> they already know how to walk a dog. They already know how to measure out food and, and allocate that appropriately. And be safe around them as well, and how to avoid eliciting any sort of negative behaviors and treating them well while they're eating and, make, and knowing how to read the body language of dogs and know when to give them space. Some cons, though, if you are considering not pet sitting as a family, it's really sometimes hard to do with kids. It's really tough walking dogs when you have infants or toddlers, and there could be some safety concerns of a lot of new people coming over or if they'll be around when you're boarding. However, it can be done. Marissa Lejeune in episode 105 includes her young daughter, who is a, quote, professional dog petter. I love that so much. And uh, we've actually started to refer to our kids as our our full-time professional dog petters. Be sure to tell the owner, though, if you have a significant other or kids around, is the owner okay with someone coming along with you to help out during drop-ins or dog walks? What will you do if they are not? Have those backups in place. Have a backup sitter in case the owner is not okay, or have a babysitter if you have young kids and the dog isn't okay with kids. Now, we do take our kids on meet and greets. And as you said, Megan, we do mostly daycares and boarding in our home where the kids are. So it is a 100% deal breaker if the pet is not kid friendly, or in most cases, if it's never been around kids to begin with. 
we need dogs and pets that are proven to be safe and have a lot of experience being around kids. So the other side of the coin, though, with all this family and holidays is really dealing with the expectations from your family when you are a pet care professional. A lot of times, family doesn't understand what we do, right. doesn't understand the expectations, <laughs> the sometimes limitations, and everything that goes into this wonderful, awesome job. <laughs> but it really is a job. So we run into this a lot. We're very busy during the holiday times and weekends, which makes it hard to get away for time with family. When we first started, our family didn't really quite understand why we weren't taking breaks or weren't really willing to set aside that time. We had to do a lot of discussions with them. A lot of like, look, this is how our business operates. This is what it's like in the pet care industry. We are our busy times are the holiday periods and on weekends. And so we will we'll make time. We will schedule other periods to be with you, but celebrating on Christmas or on Thanksgiving is very difficult for us. Now, we know that some sitters don't work over the holidays, and that's great. Right. You do what's best for you and your company. We have decided that we are going to work over the holidays, at least sometimes. Mm -hmm. We have In the years past, we have taken one holiday off of the major holidays of the year, but this year we're going to work both. Yeah. But again, you do what you do. <laughs> you do you, boo. <laughs> it really is deciding where your priorities lie and what you can make work for you and, and, and just being enough with that. Also, if you board in your home, be prepared for some friends and family to not be comfortable coming over to your house. Some people are shockingly not dog people. What? Yeah, I, don't... <laughs> I don't understand that either. <laughs> but I don't really understand that either. But they are not okay being around several dogs, cats, and all of the hair. So you may not have as many house guests as you are used to. That is something definitely to keep in mind, is that if you are used to having many people over at your house, uh, and you are just now getting into pet sitting, and you're now boarding, those same people might not want to be over at your home. And that's just for their prerogative. They don't want to be around all the, the dogs and all the pets. That's fine. Schedule a different time for those kind of functions. One of the big questions and that you have to address around holidays is the pricing and whether you will, will or will not have different pricing during the holidays. We know that this is basically an eternal topic of debate in the industry. What prices should I charge? How much should I charge? Is it okay to charge more or less? Or do I look at others in my area? Do I charge more or not for the holidays? We have chosen to charge more for holidays since the demand is so much greater and any sort of cancellations are hard to fill, especially as things get closer to the holiday. So also thinking about what you consider to be holidays. Right. Some sitters just do the day of Thanksgiving or they do the whole weekend of Thanksgiving here in the U.S. Thursday through Sunday. We charge by night. And we consider Thanksgiving night and Friday night as holidays. But it's your business. So you make the call. <laughs> Just make sure two things apply. One, it's clear on your website and or your social media. And two, you make it clear to your clients. Otherwise, they're probably going to have sticker shock and may not book with you if they don't know the prices up front. And because of that and the confusion of communicating the different prices or just what people are comfortable with, some sitters don't raise their rates at all. They just treat it like any normal day and it helps keep their messaging clear and their clients know what to expect. There is an interesting middle ground, though, that you heard the other day. Right. Where instead of raising prices, the person shortens the amount of time per visit or per walk. So instead of a 30-minute drop-in, they'll do a 20-minute drop-in, but still charge the same price. So technically, on a per-hour basis, they are getting a raise for the time that they're there, but it, nothing's changed except the time that they were there with the pet. And so... You'd have to clear that with the client and make sure it's a good fit for them. If you have a pet with a lot of medications or needs a kind of a longer walk. that or might, a lot of energy. Or has a lot of energy. That might not be the best fit for them. But I'm sure that some clients would be willing to do that kind of visit. Uh, just because you know they're going to understand it's the holidays. And that you have time that you need to be with your family and friends too. Our sponsor for this episode is Pet Sitters Associates. As pet care professionals, your clients trust you to care for their furry family members. Pet Sitters Associates is here to help. For over 20 years, they have provided thousands of members with quality pet care insurance. 
If you work in the pet care industry or you want to make your passion for pets into a profession, you can take your career to the next level with flexible coverage options, client connections, and complete freedom in running your business. Learn why Pet Sitters Associates is the perfect fit for you and get a free quote today at petsitllc.com. You can get a discount when joining by clicking Membership Pet Sitter Confessional and use the discount code CONFESSIONAL at checkout to get $10 off today. Check out the benefits of membership and insurance once again at PetsitLLC.com. Pet safety is obviously top of mind for all of us on a normal day, but it's especially important during the holidays. When there is food galore around, things that pets should not eat, turkey, skin and bones, gravy, stuffing, raisins and grapes, onion, mushrooms, nuts, fat trimmings, chocolate, butter, bread dough, and anything with xylitol. Things they can eat, cranberry sauce, pumpkin, of course, sweet potatoes, and green beans. There are a ton of infographics showing the foods pets can eat and can't eat and things that they can have from the table. We have included a few of these in the show notes, but you can just Google and share on your social media because pet owners, your clients need to know these things. And you, obviously, as the pet sitter, as the pet care provider, definitely need to be aware of this in case they, the dog, you go over for a drop-in and the dog has gotten into the can of cranberry or the stuffing. Is it okay or are you going to have to call the vet? Right. It really important here is, is acting as a source of education for your clients during this time of year. Uh, we, there's a lot of things going on during the holidays of people coming over, people leaving, a lot of new things. And so the clients really need to be educated as to what their dogs can and can't have, especially as people come in and just think, oh, I can feed them human food. We hear that all the time. And no, they cannot. So helping educate your clients so that they can be advocates for their dogs, for their pets while they're away from your care is really, really, it, it's just, it, it's so important. But also knowing why they can't eat these certain foods is very important. Either it's A, because they contain chemicals and substances that are really toxic. So like I mentioned, xylitol, it causes blood sugars to drop and eventually liver failure and seizures. Or methylxanthines in chocolate, it causes vomiting and large amounts of seizures and deaths. We all know chocolate is bad for dogs. And it could even just be too much of a substance like salt. Or, and you know, we're talking about turkey and ham and that kind of stuff. It could be undercooked or or served improperly which means that now we're dealing with issues of bacteria or parasites that can be harmful. And this is especially things like raw ham and fish that that dogs may get into. And finally, consuming items that can cause blockages. Turkey bones are a big one. (laughs) Dogs love turkey bones and turkey. They like corn on the cob, chicken, but not good. These can cause obstructions in the digestive system. No matter how careful you are, though, your dog or your client's dog might find and swallow something that they shouldn't. So keep the number of your local vet, the closest emergency clinic, and the ASPCA animal poison control on your phone, sticky note somewhere, in your car, everywhere, where you can find it. If you think your dog or your client's dog has eaten something toxic, get help right away, especially if it's going to cause a blockage in their system. That's very dangerous. Obviously, in those cases of emergency, take care of the emergency, get the dog help, but then you are going to have to absolutely notify the client and keep them updated through the entire process. Right now, before the holidays kick off, is a great time to make sure that you have all of those vet forms already filled out and filed with their credit card on file with their preferred vet because some things get tricky around insurance. If you pay for something out of your business pocket, it can get a little tricky to get reimbursed from the insurance. It is a much simpler way to have the client's card on file so that they pay for everything and then they get reimbursed through your insurance. It's a much cleaner system. It's a much simpler, much more direct system to have in place. So having those credit cards on file for their preferred vet is extremely important. So before you or a family member starts to give the pet some food from the table, think through the three Bs bad chemicals, bacteria, and blockages. Another part of pet safety during the holidays is, do you have a pet safe snow melt and de-icer? These can be painful to their paws if they are not pet safe. They can be dangerous if they start to lick their paws and they lick it, particularly for cats. So double check your snow melt 
and start talking to your clients about theirs. And then along with that snow, along with that rain comes the mess. And of course, this is something as a, as a kind of a clean freak, this is always on my mind as well. Just be mindful of bringing that into your client's home if you're doing drop-ins, wiping their paws down, double, triple wiping their paws down, which I know some dogs do not enjoy that at all. So work a system with them, get them into a routine. You can practice that to make them more comfortable with getting their paws wiped. But it is just a really courteous to make sure that they're not bringing in a lot of mud, a lot of grass or snow into a client's home. And especially for your own home too, if you are boarding. It's the holiday time, so naturally everyone thinks about gifts. So client holiday gifts. Gifts look so different this year, as does everything, basically. (laughs) Many people don't have the money. So as always, you should never expect a gift or a tip from a client. And if you do get a gift and it's kind of outlandish or something that you didn't really want, say things with a smile. Remember that it's 2020 and people are doing very weird things this year. Our businesses were hit hard because of COVID this year. So you absolutely don't have to give an expensive gift. And you you never have to give an expensive gift no matter what year it is. Heartfelt gifts are always wonderful and mean the most to someone. If you want to do a gift, which you don't have to, but if you want to, it doesn't have to be expensive and you certainly don't have to get one for every one of your clients. This would be a lot for some people who have hundreds and hundreds of clients, but there are some clients that have been with us for several years. So this year we are going to give a gift to them. And these can be really simple. Uh, if you have taken a favorite picture of their their dog or their cat or their bird, have that framed or put it on a small, give them a small bag of treats and a coffee mug or something along those lines, especially if there's a, a local um, treat baker bakery or something along those lines that you can partner with as well to, to help boost their business. And on that, you know, if, if you, there's not a local bakery near you, make your own treats. You know, that is something that we hear of sitters doing an awful lot of making homemade dog treats. And something that I've been toying with, too, for 2021. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds like a new project list for us. Yes. <laughs> Just make sure that they're made with pet safe ingredients and they won't lead to an upset stomach. So as minimal as possible. And you may even have to make special ones for different clients if they have a very, very unique diet. Or get creative and do pet paw prints on a canvas or something like that, an ornament. I know each time we try and do paw prints, they very rarely work out for us. So it's yeah, they have not worked out so far. <laughs> it's, it's something that we're still going to try, but uh, you know, it's a, it's the thought that counts right there. <laughs> if you see that the pet's collar is kind of dingy, or they need a new one, or if you notice that the pet loves a certain squeaky toy replace it. I'm sure that your client would love to know that you specifically handpicked out a collar or a leash for their pet in mind. You could also do something as simple as a coupon for a free night of service or a free walk or a whole coupon book. And we've been talking about gifts for the pet of, that we're taking care of. But, you know, if you feel, feel so inclined, you could also get a gift for the owner. Something like, a bottle of wine this year, which may be needed more than last year. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Or you could even donate some or all of their money from the stay to a local shelter or rescue. I know a lot of our businesses are hurting right now, so all of their money may not be an option, but even just like three or 5% would be a huge benefit to a local rescue. Right. And people, you know, not that this is about driving business or marketing, but when clients know that you're involved in something like that, that gives them good feelings for using you and and partnering with you for taking care of their pets. If you board or do daycare, you likely already have a set of antlers and a sweater for pups to dress them up. So you can have a photo shoot and maybe even team up and partner with a local photographer who can come to your home and do a little doggy photo shoot for 30 minutes. Yeah, which might be a really great way to drive business on certain days where you partner with a local photographer and say, Tuesdays are photography days. And this is where everybody gets their photo. And it's not something that you charge the clients for. It's just an extra nice thing that you get to do during the holidays. In all of the craziness and busyness that can come from the holidays, remember to take time for yourself, especially in 2020. This year has been crazy. You time is essential. Don't forget that two-letter word. No, N-O. It works. You can do it. 
It is not as hard as you think it is. Really look at your schedule and make time to spend away from pet sitting for a day or two and celebrate with family and friends. If you want to take the holidays off, great. If you don't, take some time in early December or the middle of November and take time away. Whatever that looks like for you this year, spend time on you. Yeah, we do not need to be compounding fatigue and stress from everything else that the this year has thrown at us on top of conf- compassion fatigue and burnout from being crazy busy during the holidays. Set those dates aside right now before all of the bookings start pouring in or before the craziness sets in. Set that time aside right now and keep that for you as if, you know, we talked about gifts. The best gift that you can give yourself is time to recover and time to to think and time to be by yourself or be with friends, be with family, to invest back into you so that in 2021, you can be on an amazing foot. I would also say on the back end of that, yes, you take time off before the holidays. And then if you choose to work the holidays, you can be busy. But then on the back end of that, take time off in January. Yeah. Take, you know, after the new year is over, January 10th or something, take a week off, take just even a weekend off. Make sure that you have that breathing time afterwards as well to decompress, to get ready for all of the wonderful business that is coming your way in 2021. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yeah, it is. Bookend the craziness with some time to to send it recenter yourself and to reconnect with who you are and with your friends and family. Right. So we're trying to prevent burnout. So pre-planning that time, knowing that it's there, will help you when you are crazy busy. Yeah, you'll have something to look forward to. You'll say you'll be able to say, yeah, I know that it's really, really busy right now. But in three weeks, I'm taking the whole week off or I've got an amazing weekend where I have nothing on my books. It's kind of helps you kind of that carrot that helps you get through those tough times. And you know that that time is dedicated to recharging your batteries and and really taking care of yourself. But we say this all the time. So again, it is your business. You can be as crazy busy during the holidays (laughs) as you want to be, assuming you have a lot of clients and they're going away, right? Like, (laughs) it's all this discussion is couched in busyness, right? And and so I guess, you know, what would you say if somebody isn't busy, uh, right during these during this time? To focus on your 2021 goals. Hmm. And to line them out, we have a couple episodes of goal setting, so the SMART goals, and line them out. What are you going to do differently in 2021 to help push you through the year? How are you going to market yourself differently to the the clients, whatever services you offer, and continue to take a look at your business? And it's not that it's not necessary this year. If you are not busy, it's not necessarily that you are doing anything wrong or you are not marketing hard enough or smart enough. It could just be that if you live in a very small town, people just aren't going away. Or if you live in a state or a country that is locked down, people are not going away. It is not necessarily anything that you've done. Right. It could just be clients are not going to be traveling. Yeah. And being okay with that. Like it's, it's not your fault. Just like we said at the start of the pandemic, this is not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. So just kind of sit and be, if that's what you want, or continue to take a look at your business and what you can continue to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that the holidays are a mixed bag for some people. Many people, um, don't like the holidays because they don't have friends, they don't have family that they can connect with because of bridges that were burned in the past or bad relationships that they're still coming over. So sometimes the holidays can be really dark for people. And now we're adding another thing on that is, well, I used to be really, really busy and now I'm not. And so these these thoughts, these these dark clouds start hanging over us whenever we don't have what we used to have. And it's just another notch in making holidays not a fun time or not an exciting time like they used to be. So when we're talking about everything that we've talked about in this episode, it is definitely couched in hopefully being busy. But if you are not, as you said, Megan, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. And that's and it's been really hard. And this this year has taught us a lot about accepting what is our fault and what is not our fault. 
So if you are not busy, really, I, I like the idea of continuing to look ahead, continuing to plan for the future, continuing to, again, invest in yourself, invest in your business in new and different ways, and think about the 2021 that you want to have. Maybe it's the 2020 redo for you. A lot of us had big plans. Make 2021 that way. And, and really, um, if, if the holidays are a dark place for you, if the holidays are already a struggling time for you, please reach out to somebody. Please talk to somebody. Um, it, you know, Jump into a Facebook group. Call us uh, if you want to. We want to talk to you. want to hear about your business. Hear about everything that's going on. Touch base with somebody. And if you know somebody like that, stay on top of them and stay in connect- connection with them through this time because this year has been really hard and capping it off with a difficult holiday season is something that nobody needs to be doing alone. Nobody should be alone during this time. So if you know somebody or if that's you, please reach out and get connected. And please also don't compare your business to somebody else's business during this time. The yeah. Facebook groups can sometimes get really um, drama filled and, yeah. and you can really start to compare yourself to somebody's business. And that. That should never be done, but it should definitely not be done now. Everybody lives in a different area. We operate differently. We have different services. We charge different things. We have different clients. Some people might be really busy and love it. Some people might not be busy and want to be busy. And some people don't want to be busy at all during the holidays. <laughs> it is, it, it, everybody is unique. Every business is unique. Please do not compare yourself to anyone else Yeah, because you are wonderful. If you would like to give us a call, it is 636-364-8260, or you can find us on the internet at Pet Sitter Confessional. Our website is PetSitterConfessional.com. And Natasha is back this week for another question of learning from your mistakes. As we're growing and as we're in business, mistakes are going to take place. Things are going to happen. How can we be better at learning from those mistakes? mistakes. <laughs> if we had a podcast on mistakes, that'd be great. <laughs> so mistakes obviously help us learn and grow. What happens if you make a mistake? It's really not what happens. It's really how you handle it. You know, nobody, everybody knows that we're human. Everybody knows things are going to happen. But this, the process that you take and the approach you take to fix it, to guarantee it, to make sure it doesn't happen again, that's really what's going to matter. So number one, I always tell my coaching clients is to write the mistake down, number one, how it happened and then how you can prevent it. And so now we have a problem and we have a solution. The problem and the solution both need to get written down on paper to become a policy. That's how we create policies. We don't make them up. It's like, oh, shoot, my dog walker doesn't know what to do when it's freezing cold outside and it's below zero. Okay. Okay. Well, you can keep the dog outside for an hour and freeze to death, or you can make a policy that's called weather protocol. What do you do when the weather is below freezing? What do we do as a company? And then now you teach that to everybody. So where someone may may have made a mistake, now it becomes a company policy. If someone loses keys, well, did you have the keys hanging on a lanyard and jingling in your pocket and you were trying to find 50 different options on your keychain? Or do you put a lockbox option in? So you lost the key. That was a mistake. But now what's the solution? So that's the biggest thing about mistakes is having a solution. And don't say, oh, that was just a one-off thing. That won't happen again. It's never a one-off, guys. It's never, never, never land a one-off thing. If it happened once, it has to be a policy. Trust me, fix it and don't deal with it again and set it and forget it. Put it in there. And trust me, we all hate when our staff or anyone on our team asks us the same thing over and over and over and over. That's a mistake. That's a management mistake because you're allowing your team to bug you and ask you over and over and over, except making a policy for what they're saying. So if you heard it once, you're going to hear it again. Put it on paper. (laughs) Yeah, really taking that time to sit and go, okay, like that one thing happened that one time. I don't ever want that to happen again. What, what, you know, and re- really think about that, really put that into context. Who was it? Who would do the who, what, when, where, why, how of that, and then go, comma, but I don't want that to happen again. Because you're right. If it happens one time, 
it's going to happen again. You know, it might maybe not be exactly the same. There'll be these slight variances, but then you're just refining at that point. Okay. You're, you're, you're making it better over time. Absolutely. And I'm saying like, shame on them, shame on you is a real thing because you've had this happen before. You know, you felt it, you've been here, you've done that, but you didn't do anything about it. So that's where they say you're not learning from your mistakes because we allowed it to happen again. Whereas no, something's happened. We quickly corrected it. We have a new policy and it's handled. I was like, cool. I like it. It just gives that sigh of relief and peace of mind that we all want. Natasha does business coaching with Start Scale Sale. And if you would like to learn more, you can go to her website, startscalesale.com and use the code PSC20 for 15% off any of her coaching. We would like to thank you so much for taking your most valuable asset, your time and listening to us today. Thank you also to our patrons and Pet Sitters Associates for making this show possible. We hope you join us next time. Thank you.